Embracing the Robot Revolution. One Community Weekly Progress Update number 310. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do it yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the executive director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. This is our weekly progress update number 310, March 3rd, 2019 edition. One Community's mission is to bring together people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and to build self replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a pathway to global sustainability. And today, what I want to talk about is something very different. I want to talk about embracing the robot revolution. You might be asking, what the heck does that have to do with a nonprofit sustainability organization like One Community? Embracing the robot revolution, what do you mean? Well, let me tell you. From our perspective, the robot revolution is automation of most of the jobs that we are doing nowadays. And we're already moving in this direction. Most manufacturing sectors are starting to automate more and more and more. And from our perspective, that means that all the jobs that are related to all those processes that robots are taking over are going away and they're not coming back. Those jobs will be replaced by robots and there's no reason to ever employ humans to do those jobs again, which means that there seems to be a predictable, a very predictable unemployment problem coming. And we don't think that's a problem. We think that that could be a solution. And specifically, if we embrace this idea of a robot revolution, the revolution being that more and more jobs will no longer be necessary, what do people do with all that time? How do we give somebody something to do when the job that they may have done their entire life has been replaced by a robot and is never coming back? And what do we do with a human population that is growing and expanding every single day, every single year, and the job market is decreasing over time? How do you address that challenge? And one community is one solution to that. We're building seven different teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, and hub models, and a teacher demonstra and a, and a duplicable city center that these teacher demonstration hubs could be built around with the idea that we can provide a way of life that is sustainable, it's replicable, and provides more of the things that people want in a, all within walking distance as a way of life that we think most people will consider to be better than the way that they're living right now. And the reason we're doing this, one of the many reasons we're doing this, first and foremost, because we want to live this way and because we believe, we know that a sustainable world is possible if enough people get involved. And from our perspective, embracing the robot revolution means seeing what's happening and being okay with that and creating a solution for the world that is coming. And that's a world where there's not enough jobs to go around, but there'll always be enough challenges for humanity to rise to the occasion to make a difference in this planet and to create a sustainable world that will benefit all of us. We have the ability as a species to simultaneously address the greatest challenges of this generation and generation to come. Climate change being one, social injustice and inequality being another. Low, uh, improving education globally is another one. Homelessness, starvation, those are two others. Lack of energy infrastructure is another major challenge of our generation and all the solutions the solutions to all of these problems already exist. So one community's goal is to make those solutions easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrate them as attractive enough so that people will be drawn to the concept of building self-sufficient self -sufficient teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, and hubs, and create an alternative lifestyle that is supported by the robot revolution, is supported by this idea that we can automate so many different things so that we no longer have to do those jobs. Most people, I think, would agree that those jobs are not jobs that really bring people joy. They're not things that stimulate people. They're a way to make a living. But most people don't want more money. They want more of the things that money can buy. And so one community is creating an environment that provides that. 
that's an evolution of sustainability. It takes the physical foundations of sustainability, which are food, energy, and housing, combines them with emotional foundations of sustainability, which we've identified as education models, fulfilled living models, high school economic models, and true stewardship, and puts those things together in a way that reduces the expenses of living and provides more free time and an environment to use that free time in more ways than people can even have in an urban environment, in a traditional urban environment like Los Angeles or New York. So we can bring all of those, all those activities that a lot of people like to do, the recreation, the social architecture, and things like that into a place then put everything within walking distance and embrace the robot revolution, be glad that those jobs are no longer needing to be done and create environments and create structures so that we can support people that can benefit from those automated jobs while having something to do with their time and their lives that is beneficial to them, beneficial to their, their families, their local communities, the, on a national scale, scale and on a global scale. Creating a global cooperative, a global collaborative, so people can come together, embrace that robot revolution, and apply our, way, our lives in a way that is more fulfilling, more enriching, and happier than the way that most people are living right now. This is what one community is doing. And so with that said, here's one week of our all volunteer unpaid teams, uh, progress and accomplishments working towards this goal, talking about embracing a robot revolution. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team added P-Funnel details to the Most Sustainable Urinal and Most Sustainable Toilet Options pages. You can see some of this work here. The core team also added a 10 Most Asked Questions About Composting Toilets section to the Most Sustainable Toilets research page. Heyman Kodaru, structural engineer, completed his 31st week helping with the structural engineering research and calculations for the Earthbag Village. This week, he confirmed a one-inch penetration into the top bags will work and updated the nails spreadsheet to include labels, basic instructions, and better and more calculations. You can see some of this work in progress here. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 41st week leading the development of the Murphy Bed Instructions. This week's focus was brainstorming more lighting installation options and developing diagrams illustrating the installation of the wiring. You can see some of this work in progress here. Dan Alec, designer and illustrator, completed his 39th week helping with Earthbag Village render additions. This week, he continued work on the main Earthbag Village render by improving colors, fixing more plants, and fixing open doors. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 151 from Dean. This week's focus, as shown in these images, was working on the external textures and the details needed to properly wrap them around the windows and doorways. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team continued with week 8 of our research into lake and water retention landscape creation as an alternative source of water for the duplicable city center sprinkler and emergency systems designs, agriculture, gray water processing, and more. This week, we started developing our second dam in 3D, the Saddleback Dam, shown here. We also tested a strategy for showing all the finished dams with a flyover. You can see the beginnings of another dam in the flyover test here. And the core team continued the process of modeling the new Duplical City Center interior design details for the library. This week's focus was the floor, mirrors on the main wall, updates to the benches, and adding in the hallway and better floor details. The core team also updated the Duplical City Center materials and cost details to incorporate the rest of our toilet, urinal, and related accessories research. And the core team started adding the design specifics in writing the City Center open source HVAC design tutorial. This week, we created the sections teaching about our wall design and our values, calculating thermal mass, and equipment selection. Tanya Griffin, Aubrianne Boyle, and Ali Marsh, interior designers from Lotus Designs, completed their 10th week helping with the Duplical City Center interior design details. 
This week's focus was further brainstorming and design suggestions for the main public restrooms. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. And James Aragal, student researcher, also completed his 12th week researching the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, primers, stains, and sealers. This week's focus was finishing most of the varnish section and adding DIY options to the paints, stains, and varnishes sections. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. Sneha Dongre, structural engineer, also continued with her third week helping with the Duplical City Center structural details. This week's focus was continuing the process of removing all the non-structural lines and identifying differences between the new 3D model and the old one, some of which you can see here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. The core team also continued writing the behind-the-scenes narrative and the detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. This week, we continued researching goat care and fencing. We expanded the goat yard outside of shelter to include an open area combined with a playground and a bad boy goat timeout area and researched and contacted Red Brand Fencing. We also organized and detailed a video of steps for woven wire fence installation into a timeline for implementation. You can see some of this behind-the-scenes work here. The core team also added a comfrey section in several new sections and added details and resources to the composting section of the Soil Amendment Open Source Hub. You can see some of this work here. Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, also completed his ninth week working on creating an open source icon and symbol set for our permaculture designs. What you see here are the icons created so far. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include Comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete. Summaries and integration of all the best known alternative education programs, including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, Emilio Nahera, digital marketer, continued with his 21st week as part of the marketing team. This week's focus was refactoring more keyword strategies, including the sustainable paint, permaculture, hoop house, botanical garden, and soil amendment pages. You can see some of this work here. In addition to this, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Jordan Miller, web developer, Tyler Calvert, full stack software engineer, and Justin Koontz, software engineer, continued developing the software. This week, the team worked on an editable document button, researched color schemes, and worked on mockups, fixed a tangible time default issue, an HTML render issue, an admin-volunteer editing, and add-time entry logic. They also updated the time formatting and made it so TinyMCE now logs links. There you have it. There is one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working together to create sustainable teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities so that we could be embracing the robot revolution in a way that works for people around the world and celebrates the fact that there will be less tedious jobs to do and creates an environment where people can really live enriching and fulfilled lives with people of shared values, their friends and family around them in a way that is sustainable and for the highest good of all life on this planet. So with that said, if you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, everything that we talked about, and so much more, visit our written blog, uh, visit our website. If you'd like to send me an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com, and we will add you to our newsletter list. 
And uh, if you'd like to help out, visit our helping page. Easiest way to help out, of course, is through social media. We are on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible to join us, to share our work, to follow our work. Uh, number one, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That helps out a lot. Leave a comment. That helps out a lot. Or share our information on whichever social media platform you like the most because we are on all of them. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Reddit, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, and about 15 other social media networks. So whichever social media you're most interested in, most likely we are there, and that's a great way to help us out. And uh, if you're somebody who's donated to our project, if you've written us an email, if you've commented or give us any suggestions, that makes a big difference. Thank you for watching to the end. And yeah, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks for following our progress.